that carries mischief. Hmm? A little mischief inside. Run away from it. It's a spirit of seduction. Satan wants to seduce you. And then those same moral songs that they are teaching. The Bible has its version of them. Why can't you also discover the Bible soon? Be inspired by that worldly man. Like he said there. Preach a Bible message from it. Now that is what Ebenezer Obey is doing now. Even some of the former songs he sang in the world. He has changed the weddings and brought in Bible now. And changed the tune. You wouldn't know it's the same song. He would say, I'm the one who sang it. Now I'm repenting. There are people who will stop and say, no, we prefer the old version. Because it helped our lost. He said, no, Christ has redeemed the old version. As far as I'm concerned, he should allow old things pass. So please, if you are born again, let the old things pass away. Because a little living, living at the whole long. Those small, small old music you are listening to. Oh, there was a time, like he's saying, you couldn't play even a regular tune on my pulpit. You will go to hell. I will drive you away. I don't care whether it's a Christian song you are singing. So we had some little quarrels with our Southern Kaduna brethren from some parts of Southern Kaduna who were using reggae music to preach the gospel. I said, no, why can't you start your own genre? It's called genre. I used to be artistic too. Why can't you start your own genre? Let others follow you. Why are you copying their own? The Rastafarians will tell you that their source is connected to that Ganja spirit. Are you following? So why do you want to be part of that source? It means each time you start singing you are conjuring their source to come in and join you. When you start showing Afro music, you are opening the gates for the dead. Fela spoke about the dead. That they converse with him, they talk with him. His mother, even after she died, will come and give him instructions. So why are you so excited about that? Now, if the Lord gives you a song and it's an Afro tune that seems to be backing it, you are only singing what you heard from heaven. You will find that by the time you finish singing and playing it, that tone has changed. It carries a signature that is different. There is no music sound that is original to anybody. That music sound had evolved before. So, I want to talk like an educated person now. I repeat, there is no music sound that has not evolved before. Whether it is cool music, or is heavy dancehall music. It had evolved before. It's just changing every day. Changing. The next generation will bring their own. But the next generation are not using drums again. Did you hear what I said? They are not using drums. Anymore. They just have pack some round things on the ground. And the thing, thing, the thing gives them sound. Not this your drums. So let us not enter. And please, uh, like you said, there must be somebody who has impacted you more than other people in music. Make sure that the sample that has impacted you is a pure vessel. But don't stay at the level of that person. You were meant to receive your own and become the impact to another person. That person that is impacting you, listen very carefully, was impacted by somebody else. You, will not, you hardly hear him talking about that person. Why? Because he too has become, he has gone to another dimension that is different from that person. They don't stay the same. He is a better version of that person. So everybody, look, I used to think there, there are music, people are just shouting, it doesn't make sense. Until I listened to one musician, and he was not, he was, the lyrics, the words, will drive you crazy. 
They were powerful words. So listen, if you listen, if you hear the voice of the Spirit coming out from that music, then you should listen to it. But when you don't, shut down. So when you live here, go and clean up your shelves. Let it not even be seen in your parlor. I've entered into people's houses, Christians, and I saw these olden plates. You know, this olden pepper. Uh, what do they call it now? Huh? Senator. Pempeke. You are still speaking our local language. It's not like Pempeke in English. Turn table. You know, this turn table round, you know, they still keep them. Then I went to a Christian house one day. I don't know what took me to his shelf. Like he said, I did not only see that Bob Marley song. I saw that man that used to uh -huh, in the 70s again. You know, those were the days we got born again. But before we got born again, like he said, he used to drink his ganja. And uh, me, I didn't drink ganja. So I, I was more holy and righteous than yourself. <laughs> Uh, I don't get that one, but there is something I didn't listen to. And in those days, those were the days, this sexual healing. <laughs> oh, Marvin Gaye. <laughs> I've forgotten the name of the man. I remember the, the song, but I forget the owner. But that was raining. And then, two years ago, I was entering into it. Born again Christian's house. Who has been born again for more than 30 years. And he still had Marvin Gaye album eh, on his shelf. And it was showing. He should be hiding it. <laughs> but I should tell you his spirit is still connected. His heart is still occupied by that man. Otherwise he they are the first things you destroy when you get born again. Or those were the first things people destroyed. When I got born again, I cleared all my worldly music. You won't find them. Plus the one, one of my favorites in those days was Victor Wifer. If you see Mami Water, who? <laughs> now, you heard what that man said. He said, songs live with you forever. Sing a song that somebody in 30 years time will still be singing. Did you hear what I said? That is the real song that is downloaded from heaven. But when you sing a song, we finish singing it. After three years, it is over. Nobody remembers. Somebody is trying to remember what you sang. It's not a song. Somebody wanted to sing scripture. I don't know who was that one. Uh, an unbeliever singer. He found out that he was being criticized too much. An American. Then he went and said, By the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. Eh? Uh -huh, Bonnie M. With his long trouser that was going east, west, south. Yeah, yeah, we, we. It spread in the churches like wildfire. Because it was prophetic. He didn't add any of those sensual things to it. If you notice. He never added anything to. He respected the sensitivity of the church. So much that even when the church tried to yank it out. The things stuck to them. Because it was a good song and it was a psalm. And it was a psalm with a deep meaning. If you go to Ezekiel you understand the meaning of that song. Where they were always prayed by the river. If somebody has taught you a sermon from Ezekiel proper, Ezekiel chapter 2, no, not chapter 2, chapter 1, and other chapters. In those days, in Babylon, the only place where they prayed was by the riverside. They couldn't pray in the city, they would be killed. They were persecuted. They couldn't practice Judaism. So they went to hid behind the rocks and by the river. And they sang. Those were some of the things that inspired Bob Marley's songs too. The Rastafarians. Are you following what I'm talking about? Now, up till the time that man died, he never changed. 
They tempted him to redo it. There is a, they call it remix. Let him do a remix that changes the tune for people to follow. He refused. It has remained a hit of the tomorrow. Christian musicians now sing it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So why can't you start screaming your psalms? There are enough psalms. Like he said, David wrote the largest number of songs in history in his time. Why can't we write our own? Any questions on this? You still want to make your comment? Huh? Okay, Cordelia. Praise the Lord. Um, thank you, Dad. Um, you know, when you live with a prophet, you always buy into his spirit. This morning when we prayed, we ended up in with throne room voices and we had the elders pray for them. Um, two scriptures come to me from where we are right now. But I want to share a dream or a revelation that the Lord gave me recently. In that revelation, I was standing by the stadium and suddenly a, a voice came in the atmosphere. Johnny Nash is coming to the stadium and all the youths, I don't know where they came from that. Everywhere youths were running. They were flying up the balustrades and jumping into the stadium. The whole place filled up with, in an instant. So I stood and I was like, who is Johnny Nash? And then suddenly, I saw Baba Deboye, Daddy, all the, the men of God, you know, the, the top ones in Nigeria. I saw them coming from a distance. So I was excited. And I stood and said, hey, hey, see them, Daddy, they are coming. And I expected that as these men of God were coming in, that our youths would start running to come and meet them. And I didn't see them. So I stood and I was like, what is going on here? Who is Johnny Nash? And then I woke up from that dream. I did my research and found out who Johnny Nash is. Johnny Nash died in 1983. Before he died, he had quite a number of hits in songs. One of them it was very popular that most of the people who are over 50 here would know. I can see clearly now, the rain is gone. Da -da. I can see all the obstacles in my way. They are inspirational songs, but they are not from God. That's one. Then the second revelation I had was that um, this our brother, um, Elder Injos, that sang the the man that just called his name now. Panampasi Paul walked in through our gates. This is our gate here, throne room gate. And as he walked in, I was standing by the admin block. He said, Cordelia, come and see. And he took my hand. And we walked into the sanctuary. And I saw the choir. They were not worshipping God. They were taking selfies. They were taking pictures, looking at themselves, taking pictures. He said, that is choir and he walked off I was broken I knew we needed to do a lot of re inventing ourselves and I can say to you because the prophet in the house had spoken you see one of the things we need to begin to to be able to divide is looking at daddy as daddy looking at him as the prophet over the house and not just over the house, but a prophet over nations. Because if you don't recognize him in the compartments that he occupies, you will miss the essence of who he is, and you will relate with him. But Daddy, Bunny, Dad, I want to say here that one of the challenges we have in this house is that everybody says, Daddy said. And that Daddy said is one thing that has made a lot of people not to recognize what is authority in the house, delegated authority, and submission to authority. And because that is not what is a culture with a lot of the youths and the people that are around here, 
they don't relate with who this office and this person is. And that is detrimental, I want to say. But let me read scripture to you, and then you will, I will just allow that to interpret it for us. Re um, Leviticus 15, 31. It says, this is how you will guard the people of Israel from ceremonial uncleanness. Otherwise, they will die. Their impurity will defile my tabernacle that stands amongst them. That was the scripture that came to me when, after I saw past, um, Panampasi Paul come to this house in the spirit. Then I want to read Revelations. Revelations chapter 5. Worship. The Bible says in the book of Revelations chapter 5, after the elders, we see, this is what John saw. The elders on their thrones and God on his throne and then the lamb that had been slain and was able to open the seal and he stood there. At the end of that scripture, you find where verse 11, he says, and I looked again. I had a company of angels around the throne. The animals, animals, the elders, 10,000 times 10,000 their number, thousands of thousands fall in song. The slain lamb is worthy. Take the power, the wealth, the wisdom, the strength. Take the honor, glory, and blessings. Then I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, underneath the, ground, uh, the earth, that's underground, and in the sea, join in all the voices, in all places, singing to the one on the throne, to the lamb, the blessing, the honor, the glory, the strength, for age after age after age. Every song you come with, if you are a minister, should come from the place of giving him honor, giving him glory, giving him um, blessings, giving him, because he's the one who is worthy. If your song comes from that place, it will generally draw his people back to him, including the animals that even you cannot see flying by. Sometimes the birds are flying. Because of your song, they will come to sit on trees and they too will give glory to God if you follow what happens on the, in the throne room. That all honor, all glory, all power, all riches belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Thank, Amen. You. Thank you very much. Um, is there still any word that is necessary for us to hear? Not just because you want our, your voice to be heard. Uh, where, who? I can't see. There's one hand behind it. That's the hand I see. Oh, you. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you came to collect the mic to give it to the other person. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to talk about one dimension of the gospel. Uh, temple musicians, as the Bible calls them, in First Chronicles chapter, uh, Second Chronicles chapter five, from verse eleven. Um, through the studying, through studying the Word of God, I discover from First Chronicles chapter five down to second chronicles it talks about the temple musician as a priest so and that is the dimension i just want to talk about because we have lost our place as temple musicians and 
because we have lost our place, we cannot represent him the way we should. So the Bible said, and it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by cause. Verse 12. Also the Levite, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Jetitim, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and herbs, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them an hundred and twenty priests sounding with trumpet. The next verse. And it came to pass, it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one unity, to make one sound, to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpeters and cymbals and instrument of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, that was just the song, for his mercy endured forever. That then the house was filled with cloud, even the house of the Lord, the next verse. So that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house. So one dimension of grace that God has given the Levite or the temple musicians is that they have the capacity to host the presence of God. At this time, at this point, the priest could not stand, but the singers were there. They were able to accommodate his presence. They were carriers of the presence of God. They were leaders that led people to worship. They did not just sing to entertain the souls of men. They minister unto men. And unto God. Now, in our generation, we have a lot of cults. When we play them, nothing move. But in David's generation, I don't know the kind of cults he was playing. But demons were going out. When you look at the, the worldly musicians, there is always a price to pay. They take their time to pay the price for greatness. But in church, we are a bunch of lazy people. Let's look at these people. Number one. We were told that they submitted to their fathers. Mentorship. But this is one area that we are lacking. We don't want to submit. Number two, they were array. What they were wearing, there was, they said they wore white linen, which signifies purity. But in today's worshippers, you hardly can find purity. Righteousness has departed. If you study the book of First Chronicles, the book of Chronicles from First Chronicles chapter 6, you will discover that the assignment of the temple musicians is in the temple. They are the ones that minister. They are the, one that keep, they are the ones that keep the, the sanctuary. They take care of the sanctuary. They take care of the altar. But today, it is not there. So we must understand that, first of all, we are priests. And then when we understand that we are priests, and we rise and begin to live as priests, then we will get it. Thank you. Thank you very, 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 very much. Now, listen. Put back the scripture he first quoted, the first scripture. From the beginning. Oh yeah, those of you on the something, just rewind. Now, I want you to listen. Everybody should write down that scripture. Let, let, I want to repeat.
You will take the scripture from 11 to either 14 or 15 where she stopped. <coughs> I want us to listen. This is where I see us heading to as a ministry. This should be the ultimate for all our singers. Where they can create a situation. You know, he brought emotions back to my mind. I was trying to, because it was just this evening, God said, we should address this issue. So I didn't really plan for it, address it, but God said we should address it. We were to talk about it later. But God said, no, let's address it. And let's address it the way we're addressing it now. Only once in my lifetime have I found myself in a meeting where I couldn't minister because of worship and praise. It was so intense. The whole thing, when I claimed there, the spirit of their worship took me over. And all I did was to begin to prophesy and flow in the spirit of their worship using some of the songs they sang. I prayed for the sick, did many things that day for the whole one hour. And the Lord said, your work was done, it's over. And I dropped the mic and I left. And I've yearned for that again. I've not found it anywhere else. I used to preach and I still preach. That the worshippers are more powerful than the preachers. But these last days worshippers, they need the preachers to send them out of the altar. And control them. It was the worshipping priest that led the way in battle anytime they went to war. With the trumpets, they would sound and step into the water, step into battle. As long as they were there, that battle was won. The drums would be going and the worship of Yahweh would be going on. While they are fighting you know, physically, people are dying. But there is a worship to Yahweh going on. Now they are entertainers. They have a session for them. When you finish your special songs, you sit down. The preacher comes to preach. That was not the pattern. It started with worship, ended with worship. That is the original pattern of the temple. Now, can I conclude this by saying this? Everything God created was created to worship him. I repeat, whether they be human beings, they be trees, they be the rivers, they be waters, they be mountains, we were all created for what? Worship. But is that where we are today? We need to find our way back. That means we need, you need to take yourself back to the throne and ask the Lord to turn you into the instrument of his worship in every ramification worship worship I will read a psalm except somebody has something that is as deep as the last one that is improving on it you will permit us to continue but if you think you still have a deep that is a deep, then you can raise your hand. And if it is not, you also permit me to stop you. Uh, I won't be polite about that. So that we don't, we don't remove from our eyes the tablets that the Lord has put before us. Yes, the man in white. I'm happy all the people talking today are deep prayer people. They know, they, 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 they themselves know the Lord. Uh, that is why I'm confident about 
what is coming out of our mouths. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate this privilege. I have noticed for a very long time that uh, those who are involved in uh, music and singing, from the choir to the band, a lot of them do not have desire for Bible studies, do not have desires for evangelism, and, and even for prayers. They run away. They just want to sing, dress well, and sing. Um, but there is a scripture that is very specific about the qualification for or condition for ministry, and that is second. Uh, uh, that is Colossians. Sorry, Colossians chapter three, verse sixteen. Colossians chapter three, verse sixteen. Please note that Second Chronicles five eleven, I think. Okay. And then eleven to fourteen or fifteen, and then note the scriptures. These are takeaway homes. These are the takeaways we are going out with today. So that you can desire to be what God desires you to be. And you can stop desiring what the environment by seduction and witchcraft is pulling you into or dragging you into. Go ahead, please. So this one says... Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. I just want to give one example, like the song Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. This uh, blind lady, uh, Fanny Crossby, she visited a friend, and a friend just composed a a tune with the keyboard so she just invited her to just listen to it so when she played the tune she now asked Fanny cross by because she, does, she didn't have the lyrics at all then the, uh, what are you hearing in this tune she said what I'm hearing is blessed assurance Jesus is mine and then from her wealth of scripture interaction of the Lord she now brought out the other verses of, of that song so this is an example of if the word of God dwells in us richly, it will help us to sing in the way God wants and it will have an impact on our lives and, and uh, others who hear. Praise the Lord. Thank you. This is the balance of the message. You can have only deep access into God. If this verse richly dwells in you, if you fulfill this verse, it is from the richness of the wisdom and the word of the Lord in you that Psalms come. In fact, what did they say in the Bible? That which we have seen, that which we have touched, that is what we are sharing with you. What I have seen, that is what I am singing to you. The psalmist only sings his experience in the Lord. And the fulfillment of prophecy around him. And encourages people or inspires them. Or anoints them with the same power that the Lord, they have seen the Lord anoint him with. That's just a summary of it. And can we take that caution seriously? Our worshippers. I repeat, our worshippers. They are the ones you won't find in the Bible study. They are the ones that they fasting. They do it 50-50. They don't. And it's not as if they create their own fast. When they create their own fast, they create their own rules. That undermines the power of the fast. Now, even them here that are seated, if you ask them, the day they say they are not practicing, they are not singing, that they are just coming to do a Bible study. Half of them won't be there. Peter Konai Korea. Uh -huh. They went to the market. They were busy here. They won't attend the meeting that day. The day they are now singing for winds of the spirit. And the winds of the spirit is next tomorrow. And they are doing the last practice. 90% will come. Because there is still a 10% that will not come. The 10% will want to get crash. 
on the day of the winds of the spirit. They will come earlier than others and start packing the instruments. They were not there in the last practice. So that nobody, everybody will be afraid to tell them not to sing. So how can the Lord's song be heard on that altar that day? When the Lord has been upset previously. Previously. How can the Lord's song be heard? So we need to bring a lot of repentance. And we need to ask the Lord to upgrade us. To lift us out of the shadows. To begin to give him worship and praise that is holy and acceptable. Because before now, we are not giving him what is holy and what is acceptable. It is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. It is the abundance of the glory in your life that you sing praise. Now, I don't know of anybody God deals with. In those days, it was popular. <coughs> Whether you are a pastor or not a pastor, believers, they wake up, they hear themselves singing a song. Because the angels are singing around them. There is no believer in the 70s that I know never had a song. And you find himself singing that song. And they will share it. Oh, many times I sang songs. Often I still sing. In my dreams. I thought I was sleeping. Then I realized I've actually been singing. Not sleeping. He used to listen to me preach. I used to sing my songs. Those days, like, uh, was it, uh, fi uh, what do you call, is it Philippa? Uh, Philippa. Philippa reminded me the other day that I used to sing songs. And they started singing the songs I, that were brought by me. Not It was not by the singing group. I don't know whether... Yesu nasonka. Yesu bani iku. Don't cry. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Grant me the grace to live for you. It was one of my songs in those days. Then, uh, you see. Yes. I started singing that. I got it from the Psalms. And the song, the tune came. Then there was another one I had in Ghana. Uh, they sang it. Uh, they sang it in that meeting. So I knew Abu took a version of it or they listened to it from a tape. Or because the tapes are there everywhere. But I had it in Ghana. I don't hear I've not heard it for a long time. I said, I, I sang that song. I was the first to sing that song. That was my song. But now it has become the Lord's song. I've forgotten. Somebody, either from the choir, once sang that song, reminded me. I don't know, this other sister, one, you know, reminded me of that song. Just last year, I think, uh, when I was standing with them there. That particular song, I used to like it. It was a praise song that I got in one of those dreams and I brought to the altar. That the Adeboe has a number of them like that too. He just starts singing and the people start playing with him. <clears throat> now they have made a special tape. Some of the songs are old songs they put there but they now mix it with his real song, the original song he got by revelation. Now if we the preachers who pray from the place of prayer and fellowship. Angels take us and they sing with us. Even Saul found himself in that company. And he spoke the language of those people. Why can't our official worship ministers insist that God must give them the experience? I've tried to record our group, but each time they get to the recording, even the Panam complain. 
we've sent them to Kaduna, we've sent them to Panampasi Paul. The songs are not fully manufactured. The God has, is not done yet with the, the deposit. And they run to try to, what do you call it, record it. I don't know that you understand what I mean. You can discern that this song is immature. So by the time they, they brought me two master tapes, and I listen, I said, this one won't take you anywhere. It's not even inspiring me. That means they are work in what? Songs change. I've been waiting to record them. But I want to hear the peculiar song that you will know it came from a watchman's table. And it inspires. There were songs that uh, Olukoya received by inspiration. He taught his choir. He would go practice it together. They sang. So the songs are still being sung. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, the lady you people call, uh, the Igbo lady who sang so many beautiful songs from Christ Embassy. Sinaj. Some of those songs came by revelation. You need to hear them. They are originals. They didn't copy it from somebody. They didn't write it from somebody. It, when they were soaked in prayer, they received so much. When fame came and they started doing, they started recycling imagination. But everyone they got from the place of prayer, people cannot remove it from them. You don't even know who the singer is. You sing it. The originator is. When you hear it, you stand up. Then there is this Igbo chap. He sang only one song or two in his lifetime, I think. Every other song he tried didn't work. And they still play him up to now. You know, he mixes English and... Is it the one where... He said, the, the one that... Uh, I'll make speed for two. Eh? G-U-C. G-U-C. Now, you need to see the original tape of that song. Eh? When he wore that, uh, the original tape, the first one with which he was launched out. Himself alone and very few singers were involved. But when you listen to that and you see his spirit rise, tears will come out of your eyes. Now it has become too common. We, 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 we will sing it anyhow. But that boy, the day God met him and he was making space for two. That journey, only God knows the event that drove him that deep. It takes a deep encounter to bring a deep song. Now, until you have that deep encounter, you can't have a song. You can't force songs on God. Is that clear? Oh, I've seen them. And up to now, I was looking, I, I watch uh, what do you call them? This uh, uh, Trace Gospel or something, something gospel. On DSTV. That particular trace God has refused to play the modern version of I'll make place for two. They go and bring you. You know this is the old one. They bring that one and play it once in a while. So the song is not going away. That one you know they got it from heaven. Where is your own song from heaven? Psalms 148. We are going to close now tonight. But now, I believe we are on the same page as to what Throne Room believes when it comes to music. You can take to your churches anything you want to take, but when you are coming to Throne Room, sanctify yourself. Only the sanctified will claim 
Don't invite anybody you know I will not invite. Uh, there was a time I almost noticed that some of the zonal pastors wanted to start doing the Rigima. They invite their friends, invite anybody on our altar, anyhow, including those who are a little bit extreme. And I kept quiet, I was watching them. Because overnight, I will remove you from that place. I won't allow you open the gate for demons to step in. Because the souls that you are leading are very important. If you want to carry those souls and feed them with poison, you are free to carry them, but you won't feed them in poison on the platform. Is that clear? There is paracle. Do that friendship with them outside. Don't bring them inside. Musicians, I hope you are hearing because you are very good at that. You sneak your friends in through the back door. You want to give them the main seat. If others <coughs> resist you, you fight them. And you say, am I not the head of the group? That's why I'm afraid to make any head amongst you before you open gates for demons to come in. Let's keep the administrator as administrator. He's not the head. He only organizes everybody else. Because once you say this one is the head of the team, there is a problem. Why can't you discover the different gifts and make them lead aspects when they are, the aspect comes, they take over. That's how the orchestra in Redeem does. It's a different head that heads that orchestra. It's a different head that heads the other one. It's a different head that heads the other one. Are you following me? The head of the choir is even different. And they all take their places when it is the time for their song. Why can't we worship God in humility like that? Instead of trying to say, I own them, then you can now carry the team for a party that the ministry does not sanction, your own private party. You carry them for competition in Kaduna because now you are becoming champions and you think you own the group. You have created a ministry within a ministry. We will not allow that. It's not allowed. So let it be loud. Let it be hard. We are one wheel, one big voice. And we are orderly. So if you are going out, it's good for people to recognize your gifts. When they invite you because of your gifts, let them know in administration that you have this invite. If it's an altar of darkness, the administration will tell you no. We don't want to be linked with that particular oil. If you are angry, Go and form your team and go there by yourself. Did you hear what I said? There are platforms where you will not find a deeper live music group. If you like, invite them. They've invited for Christmas carols. Where they went, I saw them. Then they were invited for another one of these popular crusades. Somebody was coming from overseas. They refused to go. For them, that place was unclean. They received free boys on principle. Their leaders didn't go behind to go. Even though they wanted to go because they liked those big names. But because it was against the principle of the church, they didn't go. The group didn't break. They are still there worshipping the Lord. So until when you have selfish inclination, you are doing, you want to serve both Satan and Baal. And God in the same bowl, in the same temple. That is when you do things like that. Now, this is the standard for all of throne room, Nigeria and international. Anything we do here at the headquarters, this retreat is the final thing. So that there is no schism, there is no disagreement anywhere. This is our value as a people. Let me finish by just reading Psalms 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Everything that was created was created to do what? Praise. One thing that will never stop for eternity 
is worship. Forever and ever. His presence is praise. And you know, somehow, I have a feeling that God partakes in that praise. That means the same thing you are worshipping, he too is dancing and he's, he's enjoying, he, he is not just, he's not just collecting praise, he too is praising. I don't know how it is, but his nature is praise. It's worship. It's music. That's why the next man that was like him in music, because that was the one he gave the greatest power, was called Lucifer. Music. Lucifer was a powerful musician. Worship. All seraphims are worshippers. And Lucifer is a mixture of both. He's the only one who is a mixed breed. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens. And ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. He had also established them forever and ever. He had made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons. And all dips. So when he dip does, it's a song. Everything sings a song. This breeze, these things that are flapping here. It's a song. It's a song. Fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowls, kings of the earth, and all people, pr people, princes and all judges of the earth. You see, somebody was mocking some of the kings that come to that their day meeting. In fact, somebody might say, this guy is not behaving like a king here. Both men and women, paramount rulers of big tribes. They will come with their tambourines. They don't go without their tambourines. And for hours, that Adebo is not on the pulpit, he has not even come. He's still in his office. You see them singing and dancing and worshipping the king of kings. I was somewhere where somebody was really criticizing and mocking and saying, this is not reality. And they come to praise. Do you know those kings? If you know what they have survived in their traditions. They are the harbalists of their kingdoms. The harbalists have been retired. Because everything the harbalists did to kill them didn't work. All the groups of witches, you know, there are female witches and there are female cults. There are male witches and there are male cults. There are different, the Obatala servers. In those kingdoms, all of them do it in hiding. They don't come to the public. And they have tried to swallow the king so they can put another king who will serve their God. And the earth rejects the king. Instead, any messenger they send joins the king. Including human beings they send to kill the king. They end up praising the God of the king. All those kings have very powerful testimonies. Of the king of kings. So they wear all those their glory. And then you see them dancing. They forget, they dance, they compete the same way with the ordinary person. The one that shook me in the last December one, I think, yes, it was the last December one, I think I came home and shared it with my wife, was the one from River State, who along with his wife, they forgot they were king. They were just, this is boy. Ah! It was war. You know, the, <laughs> there is a worship that is war. You know? So much that the man got carried away. 
He was on the second row of kings. There were first row of kings, second row of kings. He and his wife. They kept kicking like that and started walking out of their room and came to the front of the king. So he and his wife, and he and his wife now face themselves. The kings forgot their worship and they were watching this once. And they were sweating. He is a huge man. This was a big man. Big body with all the beads, the white dress here, and the wrapper inside. And he was, you know. He wrote something, Gene, Gene, something, something, Gene, Gene. Look, sometimes I go for that meeting for the worship. If the center look forward in that meeting, it's the worship. Why? It is rich and diverse. Diverse. When Torun first started, and we had the first leaders, we had the rich and diverse worship. Oh, come for our conference. You see them come out when they start the dances and moving, and they flowed from grace to grace. Once strife began to come in, they slowed down. Now they are very formalistic. They are now a choir. Ah, may God deliver. I break that backsliding here. Amen. It ceases in this meeting. Amen. If God needs to replace you, let him replace you. Amen. But out of suckling babes, let praise come forth. Amen. I release the babes with praise to come forth. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Let's break tradition in throne room. Amen. Those of you who are worshippers, when it comes to the national conferences of some of these people, they come two days before the time and they arrange with the home worship team. Then they start worshipping together. They practice together for two days before the main conference. I want that to start from this year. Don't come on the day and say you are from uh, Abuja Tower. Uh, can you give me the, the bass guitar? Uh, I am from Abuja Tower. I am a solo. So those of you who are our host, allow us to shine. Mm -mm. Three days to the time all of you will have joined forces together. Practice, pray together, fasted together, and then you start singing as if in competition. But that's when you start finding whose strength is where, whose strength is where. So you take over this place. It becomes a diversified singing group. You all become psalmist. Don't put anybody down. But don't allow anybody that takes you out of tune. Resist and tell them, no, next time maybe, but not now. Oh, no, but not now. If he decides not to join tomorrow, let him stay away. Can we say amen to that? Amen. So can you now try to I don't know what, what to use, whether diversify or whatever. Try to put yourself together and get things properly done. But that scripture says, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth. The chief justice of South Africa, Mugwen Mugwen, those days, the last one, will travel every year from South Africa to the redeem meeting there. And he's there dancing with his wife. He also carries a tambourine. He ran for presidency or wanted to run for presidency, but didn't eventually make it. I don't know what happened. He's our friend. But he will bring his tambourine and dance. I want us to grow in maturity and in praise and in the way things are done. That we see to it that they are done orderly. Our members who have become national leaders, ministers in government, they all come back, take their positions. If they are ushers, they are ushers. They take their position and they dance as usual. When it comes to the presence of God, you are a worshiper. You are just another worshiper. Kings of the earth, all people, princes and all judges of the earth. Go on, please. Is that all? Is that the last verse? Oh, 
Then I better go back to my reliable. Uh, uh -huh. Both young men and maidens, verse 12, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is what? Excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye. Shall we rise up on our feet? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Cordelia, you started the day. Come and close it for us. Let's just begin to bless the Lord somebody and give him glory. Give him praise. Give him adoration. And then please get those books and keep them where they can buy them. Uh, the, 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 the vision statement. 500 per copy. We may soon review them, but for this meeting it's 500. Our staff bought it for 1,000 years ago. So it should actually be 3,000 now. But it's 500 so that all others from outside can get one. Where is the copy I brought? Can you pass it to Mumbi? I'm not sure they have a copy in Zambia of that. Uh, pass it to Mumbi. We worship and bow down. Yahweh. You know that song. So Yahweh. 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 Yahweh, 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 we bow down and we'll see. See? 